Hello, welcome to Virtual Event Success Defined. I'm Bally Adams, founder and CEO of Edivel Solutions, a national consulting firm to help elevate your revenue, fundraising events, expand your mission, and more. I'm also a proud female auctioneer and fundraising consultant with Alpert Enterprises. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Alpert and uh, I'm with Alpert Enterprises along with Valley and our other partners, Jeff Cowan and Joe Gerben. Uh, we do almost 200 events a year, um, whether they be virtual or in person. And we really work with groups as much as fundraising consultants as we do uh, just live auctioneers. But ultimately the auction becomes our format, our vehicle that we use to raise the money with the organizations that we work with. So we're excited to be with you to kind of show you what's happening in the virtual world and ultimately um, keep you having th a thriving mission through this time. Absolutely. We're so excited to share with you five sessions, a full course of how your once in-person event, your gala, your fundraiser, your party can absolutely be a virtual success. You know, this year the event world has had to pivot, as they say, and Edivel Solutions and Alpert Enterprises has too. We now have been a part of transitioning dozens of events to virtual success. So we would like to share with you our knowledge and experience so you can feel confident that virtual events can and are as mission-driven, fun, engaging, and achieving the fundraising goals needed to be successful. This virtual course to help you achieve virtual event success will be featured on our social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Be sure to find Edibel Solutions, Alpert Enterprises, as well as the other members of our team, Joe Gervin and Jeff Cowell. Watch one, two, or all five, as each session will feature a different topic, keys, which we believe will unlock the door to your virtual event success. So we broke up the course into five different sessions, if you will, and I'm gonna roll through them right now and share with you the initial air date of each one of those sessions. But understand that one of the benefits of this new virtual world that we're in so much is you can watch these at any time you want after that initial airing date. So the first one is today, uh, Tuesday, September 29th. Uh, if you're watching now, welcome for joining us for our initial airing date. But this is really the initial transition for how do you take your event virtual and what do you need from a technology side to do so. It's no longer just an AV company that you're looking for. You're really looking for a technology company that can help you put on a good television show. That's what we're doing. So we're gonna hear in a moment from a industry leader in doing just that. That's session number one. Session two is going to be your mobile bidding platform. And that's going to have its initial airing on Wednesday, September 30th. Please understand that as much as we say as auctioneers that we can be up there and go get the money, until we got the money, we don't got the money, right? So that's what that session is gonna focus on. How do you make sure that you got the money? How do you make sure that you get the money? And you have to make sure that you use some sort of technology, some sort of mobile bidding platform to get the money. The third session is going to be on Thursday, October 1st. All of these will um, piggyback off each other. And that third one, third session is gonna be your run of show. And how do you put together a good compelling program and mission woven throughout your run of show and your script and your agenda. And listen, you need to have a good host, MC, or auctioneer to help run that program for you. They have to be compelling and they have to be able to reach right through that camera and go get the money for you. The fourth session is going to be the marketing side of it. How do you um, incentivize your sponsors? How do you cast your net as wide as possible? You're no longer bound by the walls of your ballroom or your uh, event space, you can have as many people watch as you want, but what can you do for them to make it worth their while to watch? And what can you do your sponsors to make it worth their while to give up fronts? So we'll talk about that on Friday, October 2nd. And then the fifth and final session is on Monday, October 5th. And that quite candidly is gonna be a rapid fire live Q&A. Uh, we're gonna have uh, many members of our team there ready for you, ready to field your questions. And we're certainly ready knowing um, as Valley had mentioned, we've done dozens of these to this point. So we will be ready to answer all those questions for you. So that's our five sessions in a nutshell and uh, we're ready to get rolling with. Uh, we know that there are four main keys to putting on a virtual event and they were kind of mentioned in the five sessions that I just mentioned there.
But the five keys to a successful virtual event, the first one is that mobile and technology partner. You have to have someone who really can hold your hand and make sure that the live stream that you're sending out is not only going out appropriately, but it is going to look good and look sharp because people are going to tune out as soon as they're seeing something that they are not um, engaged by. And a good mobile technology partner can help make sure you have that. Val, you want to talk about the number two key? Absolutely. Number two key is your mobile bidding partner, right? And, and in session two, we're going to help have you meet an industry leader in the mobile bidding and learn how and why a mobile bidding platform really helps, like Jason says, get the money, right? We are here to help you get the money, but you don't have that money. And the mobile bidding platform is going to help you do that. And there's also some really great new and exciting features that have been added on the mobile bidding platform to ensure virtual success. So we'll share that with you. And also in session two, we're gonna talk a little bit and offer some exciting tips on a successful silent auction, live auction, and of course, a very impactful bid from the heart. There's another key to putting on a successful event. We mentioned the AV and technology, we mentioned mobile bidding. The third thing is really that run of show, right? And putting that together just like a television program, right? There are no time that you have to break to serve dinner or to say, when do desserts come out? Or, you know, when do you have to give people time to sit down and find their seats as if you were at a in-person event? Um, you need to put together a really tight, good run of show. One of my favorite sayings, and you'll hear me say it many times throughout this five sessions, and Valley's laughing because she knows what I'm about to say, it's not how long something is, it's how long it feels, right? Put together a run of show that feels like it is a good amount of time. It's usually about an hour, but ultimately, if you have a good host, a good MC, or a good auctioneer, you can make a longer program feel like it's just the right amount of time. So that's your third key, is putting together a good run of show with a good host. It's so true, Jason, it is. And, and the other key though, number four, we wanna to talk to you about how to get people from your community and around the world to tune into this virtual event, right? We're gonna make it feel incredible. We're gonna have this amazing content, this great show, but this virtual world allows us to cast our net so much further than ever before. So why not share your mission and your fundraising appeal to even more people, right? We're also gonna share with you the other keys about being able to, you know, since you can reach more people, there's absolutely more opportunities for sponsorships and partnerships. So let's talk about that. We wanna help you elevate that. So I am really excited to introduce you right now to one of our industry leaders for today's session. So when it comes to taking your live event to the next level and how to ensure your virtual event will be a success, we're really excited to welcome Steve Kyler from DCE Productions. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure to kind of talk about the industry and, and kind of what we're up to and, and kind of try to help people figure out this new landscape. And, you know, that's really the way I, I kind of explain it to our customers. Um, you know, when the, the world kind of changed in the live event space back in March, it was a question of, you know, do you just want to kind of wait it out? or do you want to figure it out? And, and I think one of the things we tried to do was really figure it out. And in that there's been a lot of trial and error around it, um, figuring out what tools and what processes make sense. Um, and I use that word really deliberately in terms of there are a lot of things that you can do that are crazy expensive, but do they really make sense for what you're trying to do? So I kind of look at the world in a very realistic point of view and say, none of us are operating with the same budget numbers we're used to working with. Uh, certainly the production environment to, to put on an event now is very, very different. Um, getting people to participate. Um, there's kind of some weird things that are going on there is one, your access to celebrity people to be part of your virtual event is a little easier than it was for maybe your live event. But, you know, we're trying to make sure that everything that we're doing and, and most of the events that we're working on um, have a sensibility to them. Um, I know one of the things that you guys are trying to do is help uh, everybody understand, you know, the, the key parts of putting on a successful event and certainly, and I think very self-serving, you know, a great production partner is a big part of that. And to me, I think the real reason isn't so much because we can keep working is because there are a lot of technology layer to this and a lot of tools um, that maybe you think, you know, but you don't know ins and outs of um, and having experts that really understand how these tools work together. Um, I always start with the idea of the experience. Um, it's easy to talk about tools. It's easy to talk about equipment. It's easy to talk about skilled operators. But what are we trying to do together? What's the experience 
we're trying to have. And I think that's really the first thing you've got to think about when you talk to your technology partner is what is the experience you want your end users to have? What's the experience you want your presenters and your keynote people and the people that are driving the content of your event? What's that experience like for them? Um, you know, we all deal with different technology tolerances. You know, some are very techy and can handle the tech. Some are petrified of tech and somewhere in the middle, I think is where most of us live is that we're comfortable with tech, but when we get to that outer edge, we're, we're a little afraid of it because it's new. Um, I think we're all by way of just the world getting better and more comfortable at presenting virtually and being in part of Zoom meetings. So then taking the extension of that comfort level into a production environment where you can have a very cable news like experience on your virtual environments or more importantly have tools where you can have that interactivity. I think that's really where the skill set of your of your production partner really comes in. But for me, the first question I'm always trying to get asked or at least ask and get answered is what's that end user experience because the experience drives the tools way more than the tools drive the experience. So we use tools as a mechanism. Um, kind of the other part, and I think this is, you know, don't be afraid of the question. Like, I don't know is an okay thing. Um, and our job as your partner is, and, and certainly I think this is the way we approach it, is to help you understand what your options are. A good, better, best is, is a big phrase in our vocabulary. Um, as I said, there's, there's easy ways to get silly in this in terms of, of spending a lot of money and not getting a lot of value back for it. But then there are ways that aren't crazy expensive to give you a produced layer to things that you're doing, whether it's a Zoom webinar, whether it's a full-fledged virtual conference. Um, one of the things we did with DCE, and, and again, I'm not trying to really sell any DCE services here, but just talk about our story and how we got here. Um, one, prior to COVID, we were already doing virtual events. We did more than 50 virtual events last year. Um, we call them hybrid events where they have a small in-person audience, but the, the main audience that consumed it was a virtual audience. So we did more than 50 of those last year, well before COVID was a thing. So one, we had some, some experience and some resources and thankfully some customers that had already done business with us in this space that made it very easy for us to get more into the spaces as the business world changed. Uh, but one of the things we did is we kind of took our entire 10 foot, 10,000 square foot office here in Tampa and just really reconfigured it. Um, we now have four fully formed production spaces and I'll, I'll screen share a little bit with you um, so you can get an idea of, of what that looks like. Um, so this is one of our studio spaces. Um, if you've ever been in a live event, it kind of looks like what lives behind the screens. Um, so it's a lot of the same tools and resources that you would normally see in a live event production. And we're using a lot of those same technologies and same disciplines to kind of produce the same feel that you would have on your LED screens or on your two big screens in the corner and really kind of create a virtual environment uh, around that. So we're now four production spaces that, that kind of look like this. So you can see there is a lot of technology involved with it. Um, thankfully, we're putting a lot of skilled operators to work um, and we're doing a lot of events. Since COVID hit, we're now 54 virtual events in since April. Um, I joke a lot and say September, we sometimes have five, six events on top of each other. Um, October's looking even sillier for us. Uh, but I mentioned that not so much to, to kind of celebrate our successes because that's not what I mean. We've now gotten that real world practical experience of lots of events, lots of different situations around this, lots of different presenters, lots of different asks from a customer. Um, you know, we've now done virtual fundraisers, uh, you know, working with Jason Alpert's always great, not just because he's part of this, this particular meeting, but, you know, he really challenges us to look at the world in a very different way. And most of our customers have, and whether that's, you know, our friends at USF or our friends at Tampa General, you know, they keep asking us to push the envelope and we're finding new ways to meet that challenge. So when we're doing this volume of events with so many different people, we're learning new tricks and tips and things that one, we can help our customers understand a little bit better, but more importantly, we're understanding what works and what doesn't. Um, now we're looking at analytics around event um, in ways that we as a production company never did. So the value of the production company, especially 
you know, us at DCE is that, you know, really we've been there and we've done that and we're now doing it in such scale that that same reason you hired us to do your live event because we're the experts in the space, we truly are getting expertise at a, a volume and a level I don't think many in this space are. Um, the next part of the, the, the production equation is, you know, understanding that there are things you want, things you need, and things you absolutely can't have. Um, you can't do everything in a virtual way that you can in a live event way. So it's about the compromises. You know, what are the things you're willing to kind of compromise a little bit on? You know, the one thing that I think makes a live event amazing is that ability to network, that ability to have the hallway conversation, the ability to bump into someone you've always wanted to meet and have a real genuine human moment with them. And that's very difficult to do in virtual. Um, one, we've got a lot of tools now that are starting to make that easier, but it's still not that same experience. Um, we can do a general session just like you do a general session in the ballroom. That one's actually pretty easy. We can do breakout rooms all day long and teach classes and things like that. That one's pretty easy. But really finding those ways to be creatively genuine, that requires a little bit of work. Um, so again, know when you come into kind of the equation, there are going to be a little bit of compromises that are there. But then there are some amazing un unforeseen things. Um, your event is no longer about the dates you can have the ballroom. Your, your event used to be two days long because that's how much food and beverage you could afford. That's how much the space was available to you. That's how much you were willing to be out of the office with your staff. These things no longer apply in virtual. And we're seeing customers that would normally do a two or three day event now spreading that content out over two weeks. So rather than trying to get you with eight hours every day, we're getting you with three hours a day over a longer period of time. In virtual, all of the content is being recorded. So now there is the ability to repurpose it. Um, our friends at Synapse did a, a big event in, in June. And you know at the end of it, they came out with all of this amazing content. And a lot of people saying, I'd like to watch that content. They opened registration up again and started selling tickets to watch the records and did an incredible number around that content. So that, that content that kind of lived linearly in a real world environment, in that place-based environment, now can live on in a virtual way in ways that I think a lot of us didn't expect when we started doing events. Um, the other part is people will pay to be part of virtual events. Um, it kind of goes against the norm that you got to offer all of these things to get people to break out the credit card. But we're seeing across a large number of events that people will pay for great events. And if you have a track record of having a great event, maybe your price points aren't going to be where they were with a place-based event, but your costs are not going to be where they were in a place-based event. So what we're seeing is kind of you know, net profit on events in a virtual way, especially the ones that are charging, they're doing way better than they thought. And then the last part of that is the audience that normally would not gonna come to your event might come to your event because it's virtual. We're seeing that in fundraisers, we're seeing that in multi-day conferences, we're seeing that in webinars, that there is a much larger audience to capture because they don't have to take days off work, they don't have to get on planes, they don't have to commit to spending two days in the ballroom, all of the things that become limits to a place-based event aren't that in a virtual world. So there's a lot of things that you, you get that you don't really think about. And we've seen fundraisers doing 15 to 20% more than they expected. We're seeing ticket sales way above projections. And we're seeing attendance to virtual events, even you know free ones or smaller scale being greater than anybody really expected. So I think there's, there's a lot of things in the, the discussion with your production partner that you'll get that maybe you're not thinking about on the surface and that your uh, addressable universe is so much bigger. Um, and I'll close it out with this um, is, you know, Details in an event always matter. Um, in a live event world, if you're buying two screens and a couple of projectors from DCE, we walk into the ballroom and there's kind of two places they're gonna go. They're gonna go in the corner or they're gonna go up against the wall. We can figure out a lot of things day of show. Um, in the virtual world, you don't have that luxury. You really don't. The details really, really matter. And you have to think about the details 
with a lot more granularity than maybe you ever have had to when it comes to kind of your production partner. A good production partner should help you with that. A good production partner should have all of these great questions for you, but know the details are the killer in virtual uh, in, a, in a pretty significant way. If we miss a detail on a live event, nine times out of 10, most people don't notice it, but if we miss a detail in virtual, it can absolutely derail a program. So just plan for that. Um, I always say events go as rehearsed. Um, if you don't rehearse, you're gonna get what you get. If you rehearse, you get a chance to kind of work through the kinks and get smarter and get better in virtual plan for those rehearsal days, budget for those rehearsal days, block as much time with your, your main presenters as you can so that not only do they get comfortable with the technology layer, but that they are also, you're able to kind of walk through what I'll call the clunkiness of the first time you do it. Um, and now we're, we're kind of into second series of events or third series of events with customers and the learning curve comes down really fast. Um, so know that that first event, we know it's going to be a little scary for you. Um, we'll, you know, a good production partner should help you work through that, but know that it does get easier. And I'll remind all the meeting planners or people that are planning meetings, think about how nervous you were the first time you did that place-based event. It's two times worse in virtual, but it clears out two times faster. So just know that your partner should help you through some of those stresses. Um, and then help you kind of understand what you don't know about the equation. Um, and then it gets easier as you do it. Um, so that's really what I had for you. I hope it was helpful. Um, again, I wasn't trying to really pitch any DCE services. Just, you know, one of the things we've tried to do through this is, is really be an educator of what's possible, um, to be a good friend and a good partner through all of this for all of our friends. Um, selfishly, we need all of our meeting planners to get through this. We need all of our customers to get through this so that we can get back to something that's kind of normal. But at the same time, we've got a lot of new things that we've you know, really worked hard to perfect and, and we want to share some of that information. So whether you're buying services from DCE or not, always here to help, always here to have a conversation. And it's always a pleasure to kind of you know, work with Jason and, and Valley and, and all the groups. So um, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks so much, Steve. I can tell you that is a wealth of knowledge and certainly DCE is a great partner, but as much as anything, folks, just please rely on the professionals to make sure that you have a good program, a good virtual program and a good virtual fundraiser. And thanks everyone so much for tuning in to the very first session of virtual event success defined. We look forward to session two on mobile bidding and auctions. So we'll see you there. Thanks again, everyone.